Welcome to Van Wert High School in the Cougar Dam, where tonight WSM brings you a Western Buckeye League matchup. The Ottawa Glendale Titans are in town to play the Van Wert Cougars. My name is Mark Shine. It's my pleasure to do play-by-play. -play. Alongside your color commentary, Coach Mark Bagley. And Coach, this is always a big game, and this night will be the same. This is a great Western Buckeye League game for Ottawa Glendorf. Them and Defiance are the driver's seat. Van Wert's trying to spoil that party tonight. Let's talk about Ottawa Glendorf first and do their keys. They come in at 10 and 3. They're uh, undefeated in conference play. Keys for the, the uh, Titans tonight. First for Ottawa Glendorf, they got to control the tempo, rebound, and get out and run. Number two, dominate the boards at both ends. And number three, Aiden Pratt. He's a great player. Make him earn everything tonight. The Van Wert Cougars are 1 and 3 in conference play. But those losses are all by two points. They're, they're in the basketball game every time they play. How about keys to the game for the Cougars tonight? For Van Wert, number one, turnovers. The math equation, dead balls are greater than live ball turnovers. Make it go out of bounds, not live ball. That means layups. They got to rebound the basketball. Win both the offensive defensive war on the backside. And Colin White, he's going to get his points, but make others earn theirs as well. OG lost in this gym two years ago in overtime. It was a two-point game a year ago at Ottawa Glendorf. We're going to have the 2023 version that's coming up next. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. We're back at Van Wert High School, home of the Cougars, where tonight WSN has a Western Buckeye League matchup, the Ottawa Glendorf Titans and the Van Wert Cougars. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alts, seamless spouting. Mark Shine and Mark Bagley here from uh, the Cougar Den. Let's go through our uh, different things. There's uh, Ottawa Glendorf, Coach Tyson McLaughlin, 10-3, 4-0. A couple of close losses to Lima Senior Cincinnati Princeton. And there's their starting lineup tonight. As you can see, they will go with Grant Schrader, 6'1 junior, averaging 4.3 points per game. Theo Mag is a 6'7 senior, 13 points and eight boards. 21 is Hunter Stecksholdy, 7.8 points per game for the 6'2 senior. 22 is Colin White, six, uh, 20 points per game. 6'6 six, six junior, and number 24 is Cade Nerford, 6'4 junior at 12.8 and five rebounds. Here's Coach Ben Lodick's team, 8-4, 1-3, as we said in the pregame. They've lost those four games by a total of 13 points and three of them by six, combined six points total. Here's their starting lineup this evening. All seniors, Carson Smith, 6-3, averaging 10 a game. Garrett Gunter wears number 10. He averages 7 a game and 5.6 points per game. 15 is Aiden Pratt, 6-4 senior, 18.4, 8.7 rebounds. Nate Phillips wears 24, 5-8. 5.8 points per game for the 6'3 senior. And number 25 is Luke Wessel. He is 6'2", averaging 10 points per game. Coach Bagley, this is a team that, uh, talking about the Van Wert Cougars, they score 56.9 points per game, and 51.3 of those come from their starters. Got to keep people on the floor, keep them healthy, keep them happy, and keep them fresh tonight. They do, and Van Wert is a senior-laden team, and really there's a lot of seniors on the floor tonight. And experienced juniors for Ottawa Glendorf. So this should be a great game. And you look at Van Wert's WBL record, that, you know, the two road losses at Defiance, who's undefeated right now in the league, along with Ottawa Glendorf. And then at St. Mary's, one of the co- or tri-favorites in the league. And the one that was kind of puzzling was the Wapak game, where Wapak had a great game plan and, and won right at the end in overtime. So really, uh, this game tonight is going to be a, a, a really true tournament-like game to get ready for the tournament because they're different divisions as well. But it, it should be very exciting, Mark. Well, you and I talked earlier. This is a 2,600-seat gym, and there's a whole lot of people in here. It doesn't look full because it's such a big uh, facility. It, again, we've talked about it. It's the best practice floor <laughs> in the state of Ohio. But sometimes on game nights, uh, it, it's not quite full. But nice crowd here tonight. Pratt and Theo Mag. And this tip ends up into the hands of the Van Wert Cougars. Here's pass to the wing, and that one goes astray. There's a little miscommunication on the sideline. We're going to turn over already, created by that OG defense. And that's the kind of turnover, though, that Van Wert can defend. They can't defend against uh, live ball turnovers. Van Wert starts a little 1-2-2 with Pratt at the point. 
Then he drops down into a 2-3. There's White, baseline pass, and Mag dunks the first ball home. Pass from Colin White, who averages almost a, eight assists, almost six assists per game. And Mark, you get the ball to the dead spot in the short corner. The high post is there, and that became a dunk. Three ball goes up. That's off the hands of Carson Smith and doesn't go. Rebound comes out front. This is Garrett Gunter, and Gunter goes off glass, and he will have the first basket for the Van Wert Cougars. His handoff, that was Steck shoulder coming off a screen. Here's White. Grant Schrader has baseline, kick out. This is Erford, who had a great game against Lima Senior the other day. 26 points on tremendous shooting, brought them back from a deficit. Here's Mag down inside, Steck Scholte. Patient possession against defense, and that one rolls around, will not go, and then rebound and put back in. That was Caden Erford. There's that offensive rebound that led to direct points, and there's going to be pressure all night from Otto Glandorf. Well, the Cougars wearing different numbers than I was g given in my roster. Number four and number zero, Mark. Uh, four is Luke Wessel, zero is Nate Phillips. All right, thank you very much. Uh, different from what we were given. And you say Phillips is zero. Thank you very much for straightening that out for me. This is Carson Smith, and then this is Pratt on top. Eight and average 18 points a game and 8.7 rebounds. 4-2 early on, scoop shot, nope, tipped around, rebound this time comes to Phillips, kick out three, and hustling into that rebound is Aiden Pratt. That's three offense rebounds, they made good effort plays and they've extended this possession. This, man wants a lower scoring game than, Otto, than Ottawa Glandorf and that, that's been a good early sign for, for the Cougars. Here's Pratt working inside and he'll get the first foul of the basketball game. That goes to Hunter Steck Schulte, and we will head to the free throw line tonight. Our free throws that are sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Aiden Pratt shoots 57% from the free throw line, and not that time, nails the first. And Mark, if there's any negative, I guess, to the Cougar stats, they only shoot 56% from the free throw line on the season. That's been an early season problem for them, and it's really hurt them in some games. And come tournament time, that percentage needs to, needs to go up. but. Um, First sub is A.J. Pratt steps in. A.J. is a six-foot senior, wears number three. As Aiden Pratt makes that, I should say A.J. Prophet. Aiden Pratt made that free throw. Here's White working the lane. Pushes his way inside, turnaround jumper, rolls out. Aiden Pratt rebounds. And he will push the other way. And he's like a point four for Van Wert. He will do this right here. And we're going to get a foul that will be taken out of bounds as he was headed to the basket. That will go to Theo Mag. His first team second. That's a tough matchup uh, out front for Mag to guard that uh, because he's like a point forward for Van Wert. Look, 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 and finally he snaps it in bounds. This is Wessel on the baseline. Gunter, Garrett Gunter now to the rim. That shot misses. White rebounds. Numbers going the other way. This is Erford. And Colin White working baseline. And his shot will not go, but he will be fouled. That will be Carson Smith's first foul. And Colin White, who is a 78% free throw shooter, will head to the free throw line. That's a tough matchup for anybody with Van Wert because right on this one, he just backed down Smith and, and contact there. But um, he's such a smart player. Well, Colin White was a good 6'4 sophomore. He's an even better 6'6 junior this year. And, and as you prepare and watch film, Mark, he's such a great passer as well. And he's a complete player, and that's why, you know, big time schools are looking at him. Makes the second of the two Lee's recipe chicken free throws. This is Pratt. That's how they'll alleviate pressure a lot, is have him bring it up. Gets it back. Four on three the other way, and that pass is stripped loose. Colin White again. 
Pull up jumper from 14, back of the rim. The rebound comes to Carson Smith. Cougars on the run. Smith spins and has to kick it back out to Wessel. Garrett Gunter with the basketball. Wing pass, Carson Smith. Gunter, a little runner in the lane. Nope, rebound White again. Colin White kick out to the corner, and they will reset. He brought in number 32 to the Titans at the last break. That's Dave Westrick, who replaced Mag. This is Hunter Steckschulte. They're just trying to isolate White in the post. One in, four out. And the ball goes off of Gunter out of bounds. This will bring the second Titan sub into the game. This will be number 12, Levi Unterbrink. Levi's a senior. Westrick was a junior, 6'6". Here's Colin White. Erford out of the corner. Kate Nerford now has 33 made three-point field goals in this game number 14. And Mark, not many people will see this, but the pressure that, he, that White puts in the defense, he passed that ball so quick. They're all focused on White. Boom, to Erford, open three. And then we get a unable to end the ball, ball in five-second rule. Turnover to the Titans. Here's Colin White. He wants to take a three. Short. And hustling into the rebounds, Carson Smith. Pratt against Westrick. This is Wessel trapped in the corner. And we're going to get a blocking foul as he tried to dribble out of the trap. And the foul will go against Caden Erford, his first team's third. And Otto of Landorf is great. When you put the ball in the corner, they attack you um, and double you and, and make things uh, life tough for you. And that's going to happen. Yet. The ball has to stay in the middle of the floor to be successful against Otto Glendorf. A.J. Prophet will lob the ball out front to Garrett Gunter. Smith works, has to give it up, and Wessel brings it back out of traffic. And early on in this game, Mark, Garrett Gunter has been really aggressive in the basket. He he hasn't been uh, effective making the shot, but he's putting pressure on the defense. And I've said this all along, he is the key to Van Wert's team. As Van Wert goes, uh, it, it's Garrett Gunner, and, and he's been the, the quarterback, you know, point guard for three years for him. Mag back in the game, as is Nate Phillips. This is Gunter with the basketball. It's Phillips who just came back in. There's a kick out. This will be a three ball by Carson Smith. And then penetration dribble, and Mag knocks that one away. Theo Mag got up and hammered a couple balls. That one out of bounds. Comes sexually back in the game. Here's the replay. Well, Colin White got the first block, and then that one right there by Mag. 6'6, six, 6'7, six, six, both long. If there's space at all, they're going to block that shot. Pass inside. Mag gets another block, but it's knocked out of bounds. Uh, thank Metzger Financial Services tonight. They're doing our sponsorship of instant replays. That's six offensive rebounds yeah. from Van Wert. It's a little bit deceiving because they're, they're not getting the ball back except for out of bounds. That ball's tipped through the backcourt. Phillips runs it down. He goes inside. This will be Pratt out of the corner. Missed that. Who hit that one out of bounds? That one will go out of bounds off Underbrink, so we'll stay with the Cougars again. Officiating crew tonight, Stephen McRae, Jake Botek, and Kyle Ray. Shot missed inside. Theo Mag rebounds. And under pressure, finds Underbrink. And neither team has shot it well early, Mark. They're, they're both teams are kind of feeling out process here the first six minutes of the game. Titans up 8-4. White goes baseline. A little runner on the baseline. And a foul call. That one will go to Carson Smith. Is that correct? I'm looking to see who they assigned that to. 
It was not on Carson Smith, it was on Luke Wessel. His first team second is White back to the free throw line. It's point two for him this evening. And Westrick will return for Mag. And it's a broken record about White, but he creates so much pressure on the defense by all the things he can do. And his head is always up. And that time was a runner from the baseline. And that one is short. And the rebound gets tipped to Gunter. Westrick blocked that shot. Cross court. Pratt can't finish. Banged around. And the rebound eventually comes into Hunter Steckshoulder's hands. And that makes it so difficult inside because their size affects every shot, even Pratt's shot inside. Hunter Brink gives it up, lost it. Headed the other way is Smith. Carson Smith to the rim, overshot it. And now what do we got? That was Nate Phillips who came in and tried to play the, re the I think they were going to call a technical foul for hanging on the rim, and they decided he had, had to do it to protect himself. Is that correct, Mark? I think so. And that's a good good job by the referees coming together because there, there was going to be a, a, a collision type play here. And, you know, yeah. what, whether you call a foul or not, but he, that's the right call. I think that's yeah. absolutely the right call. And, and he, uh, he did hang on the rim, but he also had Levi Underbrink underneath him just to was. protect himself. And, yeah. So it's 9-4 Titans here early. Well, actually, all most of the way through this opening quarter. We've got seven minutes in the books. And I love when referees get together, Mark, and make that call. And that one, it, if you watch this film, it, 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 it's absolutely the right call. Mag backing down Pratt inside. This will be a three ball that will go up from Schrader. Rebound to Smith. Under a minute to go. There's Laudick on the floor yelling a set. Smith inside, pass, and oh, it rolled out on Wessel. Boy, I thought he had a basket throw off a good feed. They were doing everything right in that yep. possession except for finish, and they were a one for 11 from a two in this quarter, and 0 for three from three, so it's been a real struggle for them. Did that remind you a little bit of the first half of Ohio State the other night? How many layups did they have lay on the rim and wouldn't go for them? I think we're all trying to figure out that game. Yeah, okay. Erford missed that shot. Time for a throw. Here's a pass ahead. And got it off before the buzzer did Nate Phillips. So the quarter will end with a Van Wert Cougar basket. And that will cut the lead to 9-6 to six after the first eight minutes. You're watching high school basketball, WOSA. We're back at Van Wert, where tonight our instant replays are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. 9-6 in favor of the Titans here. We've got the first eight minutes. We're rather unevenly played first quarter. Steck Schulte, Schrader, and they're trying to post up White, and it got kicked out of bounds. And Van Wert's done a good job on a few of those posts to get deflections, and, and it's it's 101 ways to get White the ball, and, and when he gets it, he creates for others and himself. So it's such a hard matchup when, when you have great players like Mag and Erford as well. This is Mag mentioned just a moment ago. White's going baseline, and they'll draw a contact that will come from Luke Wessel. And Luke Wessel now has a pair of fouls in the opening half. You talk about great players. They all what they also do, Mark. You watch this drive here. The game is slower for them, and he made a really conscious effort to take his time and go up, and knew he was going to get fouled. Colin White now three of five at the free throw line as AJ Prophet returns. Luke Wessel will set down with those two fouls, and that's what Van Wert can't afford. Is is they're not very deep at all. They play six, maybe seven, in foul trouble. Uh, Roy has been difficult for them when it's happened this year. All four of Colin White's free foul shots have been his only points this evening. 
This is Gunter. Puts pressure. She said put pressure on the defense and gets a shot to roll around the rim and it won't fall in. But yet another offensive rebound. Cooper's getting an opportunity. She just can't put it down the hole. Yeah, and I love Gunner's aggressiveness, but he just can't finish right now. Pratt was making a spin move to the goal as he did so. Theo Mag picked up his second foul. He has half of the 14 fouls that the Titans have in the opening half. And he will be replaced by Dave Westrick. And both teams have starters out with two fouls. And the million dollar question for coaches is you put them back in or send them for the half. My philosophy changed over the years. Mine would depend on who the kid was. Can I trust you to play with a couple of fouls? Pratt. Nope, missed that one under really good pressure from Westrick. Here's Colin White's rebound. Pass ahead. Westrick's running the floor and saves it on the baseline. Steck shoulder into the lane. And that one will roll out. Kind of lit on the basket for both teams tonight. And Hunter Steck shoulder will slip and get his foot on the baseline. And the ball will go to Van Wert. The one thing about these rims here, they are tight. And you've seen a lot of balls have some weird bounces off them tonight. Again, uh, it's just been a really, really uneven start and a defensive struggle at times. But both teams are executing Mark and getting good shots. They're just not finishing right now. We're on season 18 of the Sports Report, where you can catch Patrick Cameron every Friday night at 10 o'clock. WTLW. All the highlights from games around the area every Friday night. Aiden Pratt with the basketball. And both these teams are at 50% or better from two for the year. And it's anything but that tonight. Scoop shot will fall. Nope, going to get a travel call. We'll go against Garrett Gunter. That will bring in the basketball game. And this is number two. And who did you tell me that was with your our uniform number changes? That's Caden Schaefer. He played a lot of the JV game tonight. So they trying to get Gunner to settle down a little bit and give him a little blow here. Okay, Caden Schaefer into the game. Colin White down low, kick out. This will be a three ball by Grant Schrader. Westrick pulls that rebound down, gives it up to White. And he will draw contact. Colin White will head back to the free throw line. This will be the seventh and eighth free throws tonight. And is Colin White shot all uh, That is correct. Caden Schaefer picks up his first foul. Colin White is four for six at the free throw line. Actually, that's not Colin. Five or seven? Yeah, no, it's Herford. It's Herford, yes. yes. Sorry, right. they both have blonde hair. Yeah, I was. Uh, <laughs> he's got six in the game now. It's his first free throw. And now seven as he shoots 83% on the, on the line uh, from the line this year. And he's really been an X factor for, oh. for OG this year. When he plays well, man, they're really hard to beat. There's that shot out of the corner that will bounce around and not go. Colin White with a rebound. Numbers Titans. Erford. Skip pass White. Gets it stripped loose, but we're going to get a foul that will go against AJ Profit. And this is where Coach Lodick will have to make a decision with six minutes to go in the half. Van Wert's really struggling right now. Two of their starters on the bench, and you roll the dice and uh, with this team, they're senior laden. Uh, at, at some point in time, you have to probably do that. This will be White's eighth free throw of the half coming up next. He is currently four for seven. Aiden Pratt has shot the only Van Wert Cougar free throws tonight. He's made both of those. And that one will go. So five points now for Colin White. Here's Westrick and Profit. Ball fake and headed inside was profit, but nothing happening. Phillips comes off the screen. See Coach Laudick on the floor calling another set. Phillips with the basketball. It'll be a handoff and a double screen for Pratt on the block. Herford did a good job of picking him up and getting him off the block. Yeah, he pushed him out. Still a nice move inside by Aiden Pratt. 
Averages 18 a game. He's got four now. That was great defense. It's better yep. offense by Pratt there. White backs down, and Pratt steals it. We're headed the other way. It's 14-8. Scramble for the ball, and look who comes up with it. Muscling up inside is Carson Smith after a steal for his first basket. And it's 14-10. Cougars making a little run. Nine offensive rebounds for Van Wert. Colin White unable to finish on a 17-foot jump shot. Comes another set from Van Wert. And this is really bonus action for Van Wert. Their bench has done a good job here and, and, and ride the ship a little bit. Profit working. Now Schaefer, and they re gets set to Phillips. Smith. And OG people think it rolled off of Smith's leg. Officials going to get together and discuss it. The original call was Cougar basketball, and I think that's the way it's going to stay as Garrett Gunter re-enters the basketball game. A lot of people from OG thought that was the wrong call. It was right in front of their bench, too, and that yes. <laughs> makes a difference. Schaefer inside, a little ball fake and score. Caden Schaefer with a hoop. That's the lead to two. Last six points have gone the way of the Cougars. Steck shoulder ball fakes and gets into the lane. Under break, same thing. Trying to post up White down low, and he had Schaefer on his back, and or not Schaefer on his back, Profit on his back, and with a six-inch height advantage. AJ Profit picks up the foul. And Van has gone deep in their bench playing eight. They, ha they haven't played eight much this year at all, but with some foul trouble and some matchups. This is Connor Campbell who wears 23 in. They've had to do that. Uh, um, also Grant Schrader will re-enter, and Colin White gets a break. And I think this is the time of the game where you just wait for that, that OG run. It, it's going to happen at some point. We're halfway through quarter number two. That's a turnover that will go to the Cougars. Coach Loudick tracks the ball down. So. Now here's a very difficult place to inbound the basketball from, right there against full court pressure. In the dead corner where there's already out of bounds lines on both sides of you for another trap. Pratt's going to get trapped and will pick it up and find Gunter. And headed inside and lost it out of bounds. Connor Campbell was trying to get to the rim, but Levi Underbrick stripped it loose and kicked it out of bounds. Carson Smith comes back in the game. Gunter will be the inbounder. And that's the play everybody's running now. Quick lob pass to Pratt. He's got six. And we're tied at 14. You can scout that, but it's hard to guard. And that, that's been a play of Van Wert for a long time. It's called Rocket. That brought the Cougar fans to life, too. Last eight points have gone their way. It's 14 all. This is Stechroy now under Brink on top. Schrader in the corner. Under Brink will get called for an offensive foul. Turnover will go the way of the Cougars. By under Brink's first foul. Fifth team foul. Van Wert's got some energy right now. Schaefer's given a big lift off the bench for him with uh, Wessel being in foul trouble and, and gotten back in the game. And uh, the last three minutes here of the, of the first half will be important for both teams. Baseline move, Smith up, 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 and got it in. He's got four, and we're going to get a timeout on the floor. Ottawa Glandorf, they trail by two. You're watching high school basketball, WLSN. Tonight's free throw sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Cougars on a run, Mark. They are, and, and not many times with three minutes to go in the second quarter has Ottawa Glendorf been two for 12 from the field. The free throw lines really kept them in the game with their aggressiveness, but 
Uh, they are really struggling to shoot the ball right now. They've had a few turnovers here, and Coach McLaughlin called a really good time out there to get the ball inside. Erford down inside, and his pass out front was headed in the direction of Grant Schrader and went out of bounds. Cougars on a 10-0 run. Yep, and they, and they decided to sit mag here for the last five minutes of the half, and I think it's affected their continuity a little bit too as well. Well, you look at a team in the Ottawa Glendorf Titans who averaged 67 points per game, and under three minutes to go, they're setting on 14, so certainly well below their average this year. Yeah, and, and there's some games like that in the Western Buckeye League. They know each other so well. They're so well scouted and no personnel. And Aiden Pratt gives it up in the corner, heads baseline. Here's a pass that will be a finish at the rim by Carson Smith off a good pass. Good pass, great catch and finish. Smith's Smith. got six points all in the quarter. White trying to back him down. Now Steck Schulte into the lane, and his little runner will bounce around and fall in. Hunter Steck Schulte stops to run with his first basket of the evening. Pratt doubled up in the corner. Schaefer going to throw the ball ahead. This is Profit for three, and White rebounds. Steck Schulte again. Pass to Westrick. That was a well-executed play, and Dave Westrick has his first basket. Yeah, Van Wert switching the, the, the pick and roll there, and, and they didn't go on topside chest, and it's wide open. Pratt and Erford. And Steck shoulder gets involved. Here's Aiden Pratt for a deep three, and he got it. He's got 14 of those on the season now, and he's got nine points in this game. Three right back at you from Erford. There's been an explosion of score in the last minute and a half, Mark, and all of a sudden you can see the, the intensity pick up both ways. Erford's second three of the game gives him 10 points in the game now. He's got 10 of the 21 points. A little runner misses. Steck Schulte rebounds. Schrader thought about a three and instead looked inside to White and they reset. Steck Schulte from 14 feet. Kind of an unguarded jumper for him. He's got four in this run that OG's putting together and taking the lead back at 23-21. And OG has really made a concentrated effort to post up White tonight, uh, more so than I've seen this year. And, and that's a lot of other people to have opportunities too because so much focus is on him inside. Cougars look like they want to play last shot. They're in the true four corners right now. He's counting, too. He is. Gunter breached beats the uh, five count. And now Pratt with West regarding him. They like to put Pratt in the middle of the floor because it's hard to help when, when he's in the middle because you have to come off shooters then. Gunter and Steck Schulte. Pratt. Had it tipped loose. Nope, Pratt gets it back. Here's a three from him again at the buzzer that bounces around and won't go. Scoring picked up in quarter number two, but the Titans will take a two-point lead to the break. You're watching high school basketball on WSA. We're back at Van Wert, where tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor, the Ohio distributor of the structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of alts, seamless spouting. Two-point lead, Titans at halftime. Mark Bagley has been keeping stats. What do you got, Mark? Uh, first of all, for Ottawa Glendorf, they, they improved at the end, but they were they were only took two or five two-point attempts. They were five of ten for 50 percent, two of six from three, 33 percent, 44 percent overall. They were 7 of 10 from the line for their 23 points, but only 16 total shots in the first half for Ottawa Glendorf. Van Wert took 29 shots, 8 of 22 from 2, 36%, 1 of 7 from 3 for 14%, 31% overall, 2 of 2 from the line, 21%. Where Van Wert got the extra shots, they had nine offensive rebounds, Mark, and out rebounded Ottawa Glendorf 16 to 12 in the first half. Turnovers were, were marginal, four for Van Wert, five for Otto Glandorf. 
it, we talked about it. It was kind of a rock fight in the yeah. first half, and we really expect the adjustments at halftime, and, and both teams are going to pick things up a little bit. Mag's back in um, for Otto Glandorf, and, and Wessel's back in. So both teams are full strength, and I think this score will get up in the – 40s or uh, in the 50s or 60s but when it's all said and done I am very curious to see how the first three minutes of this half goes we often talk about how important those are and I think tonight for both teams this is an important segment right here Pratt hands off Gunter Pratt goes back door and gets a nice feed and scores that was really good execution by Van Wert there was a wrinkle of a play that they run where they get a double screen he went back door then against the Ottawa Glendorf's pressure we talked about that we thought Ottawa would turn the pressure up, and, and then they were to advantage of that with the back cut. And Theo Mag picks up foul number three, and we're just 15 seconds into this one. And that brings Dave Westrick back in the game, who played well in the opening half. Pratt will get a free throw. He made two in the first half. These are Lee's famous recipe chicken free throws tonight. And he rolled that one around and in. That's point 12 for him, and his team comes right out of the locker room and takes a one-point lead. We'll see how long Coach McLaughlin sits the mag because he sat a long time in the second quarter and he's out, you know, 30 seconds into, into the third quarter. Pratt jumps out and gets a steal. He and White head to the rim and Pratt goes up and scores. Five consecutive points to open the half. Aiden Pratt, 14, he averages 18 a game. And he is a really tough matchup for any team. And that one will skip out of bounds. So Van Wert Cougars have come out, and they are making the early statement here in half number two. They have, and OG is, is just pressing a little bit right now. You can tell they're just a little tight, and the passes are off, and, and Pratt has really taken over this third quarter, the first minute. Nate Phillips with the basketball, and now Pratt. He blows around Westwood, goes right to the rim and finishes again. Seven in the quarter, 16 in the game. Pushes the lead to 28-23. Colin White, step back jumper from 15. It's banged around, and it will go out of bounds off of Ottawa Glandorf. There's a lot of good players in the Western Buckeye League, and you got to put Pratt right in there with them. Absolutely. And not just this year, but in past years as well. He's, he's been a point forward for him. He brings the ball up. When he's in the middle of the floor, he's just deadly. And, and Roy, with Mag out, it's taking a lot of size off, off of uh, the floor for OG. Here he is with Westrick matched up with him this time. Like fakes it goes past and scores again. Erford tried to take the charge. Tyson McLaughlin says, we need a timeout. Cougars on a roll early here in half number two. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN. Timeout Ottawa Glandorf. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Mark Bagley, that was a Tyson McLaughlin timeout. Things are getting away from him here this quarter. Yeah, and, and for whatever reason, the dominance of OG, they, they're 15 and, and uh, five over the last 20 games of Van Wert, but at Van Wert, in this newer gym, it's been a difficult uh, over the long haul for them with some really close games and close losses, whether it's the floor, the atmosphere, the environment, and that was a really good timeout and look for them to get a possession where White is in the play to make plays for himself or others here. They need a hoop. Steck shoulder comes off a screen. He goes right to the rim and scores over top of Pratt. That was a nice move by Hunter Steck shoulder. He now has six in the game and will go to the free throw line. Big time play there. And they ran a simple high ball screen here. You'll see that high ball screen. Van Wert didn't switch, got there late. And then the end one opportunity. Aiden Good. Pratt picked up his second foul. Hunter Steckshoulder, who shoots 83% from the free throw line, shows you why. Point seven for him tonight. And Ottawa Glendorf's a great team. They, they responded. You know they would, and they respond well to, to Coach McLaughlin. So they get a three-point play coming out of the timeout after a 9-0 run early on here in the half by the Cougars. 
They moved over Erford now to guard uh, Pratt. Change it up a little bit. Here's Phillips going to the rim, and he will go off glass and score. And right, and right now, Van Wert's just doing dribble weave action, just beating him off the dribble. Four points for him. And he goes back to six. Here's Erford to the lane. And his ball fake, and it will be contested by Carson Smith, and Carson Smith will pick up a foul. And coach, second. Yeah, and Coach Vlog's saying, stay down. You're not going to block that shot against size. Just go straight up. It's amazing how hard it is for any player to make shots when you wall up, put both hands, and walk through the shooter. And he left his feet, and he was exposed. Herford was a leading scorer in the first half for both teams. He had 10 points. That was his first free throw miss of this evening. He's two for three now, looking at his fourth free throw of the night right here. Junior had 26 against Lima Senior and played extremely well in the second half of their comeback last Saturday night. And, and we'll just watch here to see how long Mag's going to sit. Looking to finally get it in. Here's Phillips headed off. Bounce pass. And finishing on a nice pass is Carson Smith. He's got eight now. And that was a clinic press break by Van Worth attack at, at, at them. Erford steps into a three, missed it. Rebound, Aiden Pratt. Here's Smith, thought about a three and backs it out. Now heads to the rim, spin move. And that ball gets kicked out of bounds. The other thing about Theo Mag, the longer you sit, the longer it takes you to get back into the flow of the game. Yeah, he sat the first uh, five minutes of the, of the second quarter, or the last five minutes of the second quarter, and now he sat here for about three. It is hard. It is very difficult. We'll see when he gets back in the game, how quickly he's able to adjust to game speed. Gunter looking for somebody to pass it to. Finally finds Pratt. He's got Westrick on him again. And goes up and can't finish. Fights for his own rebound. He's going to bring it back out. This will be Carson Smith. Good check out that time. Hunter Steckscholdy. Colin White, his spin move, and he will be fouled, and Carson Smith will become the first fan work Cougar with three fouls. I think they called that on Schaefer from the side. Yeah. Okay. Who watched this replay? I think Schaefer got him. Ah, thank right there. you very much. Probably a, a better foul that he has two than Carson Smith having three. Thank you for that, Mark. Here's White's all of his points today at the free throw line. That is point six for him. He's been fouled in the act of shooting five times this evening, but has no field goals yet. And great players find a way, and it's just a matter of time before he finds that way, but we'll, we'll see how the press is, is, is going to affect Van Wert. Seven for 10 from the free throw line for Colin White. Here's Schaefer, bounce pass across the lane, Wessel lets everybody go by and has to kick it back out. So Titans got back. Here's Pratt to the rim where he will draw a foul. And, and Mark, it's a broken record, but he is so good in the middle of the floor. He can go left or right, he changes speeds. And right now, the one-on-one -on -one approach from Otto Glendorf just hasn't been very good. The foul went to Brad Mag that time. We checked it a moment ago, and I missed that. My apologies to Brad. Aiden Pratt has made both of his, all three of his free throws this evening. And now has made four. That was his 19th point. He averages 18.4. And we're not halfway through quarter number three. Second free throw, Pratt. Splashes that one. It's been mostly man defense both ways. It'll be interesting, Mark, to see if someone changes. Who's going to change first? Who's going to blink first? Play a little zone. Do something different. Hunter Brink wanted to get to the rim and cannot. This will be Colin White for three. That's short, but the rebound goes to Erford, and he goes up and scores. He's got 13 in the game now, and what do we got? You got a warning mark, they touch the ball oh, after the play, and you get one warning, the next one would be technical foul. That helps them yeah. set the press up maybe a little bit, but they, they, they're out of their warnings now. 
And once that ball goes through the net, the team that just scored has to leave it alone. Can't touch it at all. Schaefer out of the corner for three. Nope. Battle for the rebound. The rebound comes to Wessel, and who to go off of? It will go stay with uh, Cougars. There's that backside rebound we talk about, Mark, in WBL. Who can get that backside board? And, and that time, Wessel uh, had, had a good, good uh, angle on the ball and kept the, another play alive. Nate Phillips back in the game. He has four points. Eric Gunter will be the trigger man on the baseline. And he looks and looks and finally gets it inbounds. This is Wessel. Wessel goes baseline on Erford and tough shot. Pretty good defense that time funneling to the baseline. Here's a pass ahead to Colin White. White steps through the defense and will get an and one opportunity. And that's how you get going, Mark. You get a layup. And in this case, it's an and one opportunity. And uh, there was no one back in transition. He made a nice crossover move to finish. Did they give the foul to Phillips, I believe? Yes. Yes, they did, as you can see on our Metzger Financial Services replay tonight. That's Nate's first foul. Here's White to the free throw line after making his first field goal tonight. That's point 10 for him now. And all of a sudden, it's a one-point game. Yeah, it's a one-point game again, 35-34. Here's Phillips to the rim, and that gets blocked from White from behind. Numbers going the other way, but good defensive play by Pratt and did, Phil, did Pratt touch the ball out of bounds? Was that the call? I don't know what the call was. Uh, he, he was trying to set up on the sideline, and I think that must have been what the call was. Tried to take a charge, that didn't happen. I think he hit the ball out of uh, standing out of, standing out of bounds. OG trying to take a lead. Underbrink shot misses. Wessel was going for the rebound. He along with Erford, and the foul went to Luke Wessel. That's foul three on him. That That's a tough play there. Both guys going off the ball. It appeared to be a box out over the back, but again, they call him for the chicken wing elbow there and, uh, on the rebound. So 50-50 uh, ball there, and, and OG won that one. I think it was 50-50 until Erford went down hard. Yeah, and I think that made the call pretty easy then. Here's White trying to post up on Phillips. Baseline jumper. Hustle rebound by Mag. And eventually, nope, going to stay with the Titans as it was touched out of bounds. And that's three straight possessions, Mark, for offensive rebounds. And you can see the aggressiveness yeah. of OG starting to pick up. They're starting to impose their will a little bit on this game. That was Brad Mag kept that ball alive. White trying to post up Phillips again. And what do we got? Held ball situation. That will stay with OG. Phillips gives up about three inches. He's been battling down inside with Colin White for the last few possessions. Steck shoulder into the lane. Underbrink. And Underbrink will go off glass. Nope. Rebound Steck shoulder. And Erford gets it stripped loose, but there's a foul. Pretty tenacious possession that time for the Titans. Yeah, and there's been about the last three minutes to get back in the game, Mark, about five offensive rebounds, and that that is what we're, we're accustomed to seeing out of Otto Glandorf. That was Phillips' second foul. Here's Erford to the free throw line. He is three for four this evening, has 13 points, and that is point 14 for him, 83% free throw shooter on the season. And Coach McLaughlin has been committed to keeping Mag on the bench here and, and play through that with three fouls. And Wessel from Van Wert has three fouls. So, again, that, that's a big, big part of this game right now. After being down, it's now 36 all. Titans have got back in it. And, and look for Van Wert to get the ball to uh, Pratt right now. They're, they're basically face guarding him with the referee. Smith, duck in, Gunter, trying to get it inside to Pratt, he goes up over Erford, missed it, rebound Underbrink, that was great defense by Erford, he made him work harder and got him off his spot, Steck Schulte looked inside, this is Erford and Pratt matched up, here's White, 
And he's just going to muscle up through everybody and score. He got deeper that time, and there's no way you're going to stop that. Colin White with 12. Guess who's back in the lead? Titans. And Van Wert's going to try to spread him out again and go to that spread type offense. They can beat him off the dribble. It was 30 23. There's a steal. White battling with Phillips. And then Phillips will block the ball out of bounds. It was 30 23 in favor of Van Wert at 6.18 to go in the quarter. Cookers have come all the way back now to take a 38-36 lead with the basketball out of bounds. There's Wessel back in the game with four fouls, three fouls. Yeah, they're going to roll the dice here in the last minute 44 and play them with, with uh, three. They need rebounding right now. There's Colin White, Brad Mag. A weave action out front. Coach McLaughlin calling the set. Colin White comes off the screen, and Wessel challenges him, and I think we're going to get foul number four on Luke Wessel. Let's see what the call is. That would be correct. Luke averages 10 points a game, is scoreless this evening, but has made a lot of hustle plays tonight. Here's White back to the free throw line. And that really limits Van Wert's bench and different things they can do. Wessel does a lot of things well for Van Wert, and he's going to have to sit for a while now. This is the seventh time that Colin White has been to the free throw line after being fouled. One time it was a and one opportunity. The other six were two shot fouls. Sometimes when your shot's not going, Mark, you just make your will yourself into the free throw line. Yeah, it's layups and free throws when you're struggling. And he struggled with his outside shot tonight. And what do we got? Foul inside. I think Erford and Pratt were going at it inside. I think they got Erford. Yeah, he, he's been face guarding Pratt, and there, there must have been a little bit of contact there. Jersey grab or something, whatever that was, the, the official caught that. Second foul on Cade Erford to go with his 15 points this evening. Lob pass inside. Pratt goes up, everybody, and scores his 21st and 22nd point tonight. I'm going to have to get a bigger score sheet for Aiden Pratt tonight. White inside, and he will score on the drive. A tough move, and right now the two best players are going at it. <laughs> they're not guarding each other, but they're going at it. It's been an impressive performance. Colin White, Caden Erford each have 15 for Ottawa Glandorf. So they have a three-point lead. Pratt wanted to erase that right there. Instead, he goes to the rim and will draw a foul before the shot attempt. Does it go against Colin White, I believe? It is. That's Colin's just his first foul this evening with 40.9 seconds to go. And Ottawa Glendorf's already in the bonus, and Van Wert's getting close. Out of bounds play, frees up Carson Smith for his ninth and tenth points. One both, point game. Yeah, both guys went to Pratt, and Smith slipped, and he was wide open. Becomes a double figure score tonight, does Carson Smith. Titans want to play last shot of the quarter with a single point lead. They've already put 18 on the board this quarter. They'd like to finish with another basket. Yeah. We're going to expect either a high ball screen here, Mark, or a handoff uh, at the elbow. Here's the set coming right here. White's going to get that screen. Nope, it doesn't accept. It goes baseline instead. Stexor is going to get a three look. And the ball's tipped out of bounds by Pratt with 1.3 to go. And with 1.3, not much time, I would expect White to go to the backside block and look for a lob here, Mark. And they're going to inbound White. it all the way out on the V here where the ball was knocked out of bounds. So it's not your typical inbound on the baseline type play. Let's see what they come up with here. It's going to be backside screen. And, and look where White's at, Mark, on the backside. Yeah. They're throwing it up right to the rim. Nope. Yeah. He gets a three-point look instead. Goes off the back of the rim. Titans were down. They come back to lead by one as we head to the fourth. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN.
We're back at Van Wert tonight where our free throws have been sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home of style, happens here. Van Wert wins the quarter 19-18, but OG will take a 41-40 lead to the fourth quarter. And I wonder if Theo Mag gets some wind sprints in the back hallway. <laughs> He's back in the game now, but he's sat a ton. Last five minutes of the second quarter, the last seven and a half minutes of the third quarter, and um, he brings a presence to him, and he's got two fouls now in the fourth quarter, so they're full strength. Um, and Van Wert's not with Wessel with four. Yeah, they're going to play some zone. Here's the adjustment I talked yeah, about. There you go. And that's why, you know, Coach McLaughlin's a great coach. He's, he's making that adjustment to see if that, that'll throw Van Wert off a little bit. It also keeps Mag from having to be isolated on a single player, too. Let's see where, where, where Van Wert goes to here. He got some good three-point shooters, but they haven't shot it well very much tonight, except for Pratt. Pratt tried to go baseline and cannot. Gets cut off, and they're going to reset. 30 seconds into the fourth quarter. And against the 2-3 match, you got to get the ball to the short corner, Mark. And then you can have action because right now the middle is wide open, but the ball has to go to the short corner, corner first, then you can cut off out of it. Working against Mag inside was Gunter, but has to bring it back out. Minute into the fourth quarter. Phillips, Pratt. And right now it's just perimeter passing with cuts, but there's nothing in the high post or short corner. You now, when you say short corner, Mark, you're talking about six or eight feet away from the basket, but right on the baseline. Yeah, because then it really flattens the zone out and you have all kind of options and you can see the whole floor. Schaefer gets a three out of the corner, snaps that off, it gets tipped back out though. Been about a minute and a half possession here to start the fourth quarter. Phillips with a deep three, splash. Nate Phillips now has nine of those on the season and puts his team up two. And that all came from an offensive rebound and a patient possession. And when you hit threes, that's how you get teams out of a 2-3 zone. Cougars will stay man to man. Colin White and Pratt. Good help, and what do we got? Pratt will get called for foul number three on him. And, he made, and Coach Lodick made the decision, I'm going to put my best on their best and see what happens. They're in the bonus. That's yep. the difference right now, and foul trouble is, is there. Through sure. the game so far, the Titans are 15 of 20 at the free throw line. And now 16 of 21. I've got Van Wert at four for four. Is that? That's what I have, too. Got? Five for five, I guess. Five for five. On yes, this one there. the end one with Pratt. Yeah. Five for five. Let's see what White does on this one. Back to the rims. That one. Mag makes his presence felt with a rebound, and then he will draw a foul. And that's been the big difference in this half after Van Wert got the seven-point lead mark. Offensive rebounds by Oliver Glandorf, which is one of the keys coming into the game. They've really uh, taken over that aspect. That foul went to Garrett Gunter, his first. Theo Mag has just a single basket this evening, way back in the first quarter. Spent much of the game on the bench in foul trouble. He is a 79% free throw shooter on the season. Point three for him. And how do you get back in the game physically, mentally, is by shooting layups and free throws. And that's what Otto Glandorf's done uh, on both those areas. AJ Profit will be back in the game, six foot senior. Played a lot this evening. And Mag doesn't make that one, and Nate Phillips rebounds. So we're tied at 43. And back man to man, yeah. Back to man to man. They played the one possession for about a minute and a half and went back to man, so. Here's Phillips, pass. Here's a three that'll go up. That one will go, three ball, A.J. Profit. Huge shot, two role players from Van Wert made big threes, last two possessions. Back at you comes Grant Schrader, his first basket of the evening. And this has become typical of this game, Mark. I thought the, the game would be in the 60s, and we're heading that way now, and both teams are playing very efficient. 
Well, Grant Schrader made his fifth three-point field goal of the year a moment ago. A.J. Prophet made his ninth. So role players are stepping up right now. Prophet wanted to take that one up. Mag's guarding him. As you can see right here, Erford has Aiden Pratt, and we're going to get a foul that will go against Caden Erford and will be his third. And that's only the team fifth, Mark, so Van Wert's still not in the bonus yet. Otto Glendorf's in the double bonus to finish the game, so um, that's going to be a factor, and they're bringing Wessel back now with, with five minutes left. They'll probably do some offense defense is my guess. A.J. Prophet will sit down, who just made that three a moment ago. There's Gunter. shoulder has got him. And he goes right to the rim but can't finish. Wessel rebounds, goes up, and Mag blocks the shot. And he got it clean on top, and that could have been four, but it was clean and it was a good block. Here's Colin White right to the rim, gets his own rebound, and then Mag scores on that one. So Theo Mag making his presence felt two-point tight lead. Another offensive rebound, and Mag obviously makes a big difference for Otto Glandorf. Phillips. Cougars trail by a, a basket. Pratt goes right to the rim, and Mag will get foul number four, I believe. For a couple of different Titans there. Let's see who they give it to. I believe it was Mag. We'll see on the report yeah. here. Take a look at it again on our Metzger Financial re Replay. It is Mag's fourth foul. It looked like it was clean up top, Mark, but down low he got him with the body. 13-point third quarter. Got the Cougars back in it from Aiden Pratt. That's his 23rd point tonight. Here's that offense defense you're talking about as Schaefer comes back in the game. And the Otto Glendorf staff right now, they're all four huddled. They're, they're trying to decide whether they're going to do the same thing right now. And right now they're not because they're, all, they're going to be on offense here, so they'll probably wait. Cougars now 7-for-7 seven seven at the free throw line this evening after shooting 50% on the season. We're going to get a timeout. Our break also, you're watching high school basketball on WOSN. Tonight's instant replays are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Mark Beck, do you thought that was a good timeout? Why? Well, Van, Van Wert's gone to the bench pretty deep tonight, but uh, Coach Lodick had five timeouts left, and you just kind of reset everything. Time and score, four minutes left. Um, what are we trying to do offensively and defensively? And I, I really believe that was a, a good timeout. Uh, Wessel's out of the game now, and, and they're trying to, you know, answer what OG will do right now with their set, which will probably involve White and, and probably involve Mag somehow uh, in this set. It has turned into a four-minute basketball game as we're tied at 48. White's going to get a couple of screens and try to post up down inside, and then two more screens coming this way. And got to get an and-one opportunity. And that was a really good set coming out of the timeout. He, it looked like they were going to go on a post up, and he came off a double screen and just kept on curling to his right hand. Looking to see who they assess the foul to. Um, it looks like it's going to go to. Looks like Carson Smith got foul three. And that one is Colin White's 19th point. You know, you talk about he hasn't had his best basketball game. He's got 19 points. Exactly. Yeah. He's found ways to make plays. Yeah, that's and, correct. And that was a great set by OG to get him the ball in a, in a good position. Three-point lead. And we'll Cougars. See, we'll see if Van Wert takes a timeout here to get Wessel back in the game to get their best five out there. Well, Tyson took out Theo Mag on a defensive set. Here's Carson Smith backing it out, and now Aiden Pratt. Colin White has him now, and White will challenge the shot and missed it. Tip up, nope, Phillips, and who hit it? It will be OG basketball. Two opportunities wouldn't go. 
Yeah, a couple layups there. Yeah. They weren't missed. And comes Mag back. Here comes Mag, and Wessel was going to the, the, the to the bench or to the scores table and came back because they're on defense here. And three point tight lead. They're going to try to extend that here. They have three timeouts remaining. Van Wert has four. They're going to run the same play here. Off the double screen, he's going to curl. And he gets a screen from Mag and throws it back out on top. Steck shoulder now. Working at a five count, they're close. And they got it. He got it. Good pressure defense by Nate Phillips. You can see it coming. Here's our offense defense, Brad Mag, Brad Mag back in the game defensively. And Luke Wessel back in offensively. And Van Wert needs a really good possession here to get some movement and some action. They've tried to do some isolation, Mark, and now's the, the time they got to run something to get people in the right spots. And it looks like they're going to do that right now. It was a two-point game a year ago at OG. It was an overtime win for Van Wert here two years ago. Brad Meg tipped that one. It almost went off of Carson Smith. And that was intended to be a post up for Pratt. And OG did a great job of getting him off his spot. They doubled him for a briefly, a brief time and, and just a really good possession there. Carson Smith. Pratt's down low, spins baseline, goes up and will score and draw an and one. 26 for Aiden Pratt. They ran a wrinkle off their side out of bounds play. And instead of coming to the double screen, they posted up, and Pratt just made an outstanding move on balance and one opportunity. Colin White picks up his second foul. And here's Aiden Pratt, 26. If he gets to 27, we'll be tied again. Splash. And, and basketball is a team sport, Mark, but these two guys are going at <laughs> each other right now. So Lee's famous recipe chicken free throw ties it at 51. Here's Mag on the offensive end, Theo Mag. We're crowd up asking for some defense. And timeout called by Tyson McLaughlin. We got 158 to go. We're not at 51. You're watching High School Basketball, WOSN. We're back at Van Wert, where tonight's free throw sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's famous recipe chicken home style happens here. Tyson McLaughlin's third timeout. And this will be 101 ways to get uh, White <laughs> the ball. And we'll see what kind of wrinkle they run. Block to block action coming to the top. Isolation, middle of the floor action. White has to pass it back out to Erford. Then posts up inside against Carson Smith. And then Caden Schaefer kicks the basketball. They had White on one side posting up, and they had Mag on the other side, so it's hard to help when you have two really good guys down low. 6'6 six, six and 6'7. Six, Erther checks in at 6'4. It's good size on the floor for OG. Here's Mag at the top of the circle. White comes off a screen low and muscles up and gets his own rebound. And what do we get? Looks like a foul call. Somebody reaching on the rebound. I think it was Aiden Pratt. Aiden Pratt will get foul number four for him. And right now, OG's the double bonus, and so they're shooting two the rest of the way, and Otto Glendorf still has a foul to give, I believe, Mark. Colin White back at the free throw line, makes that one. That is point 19 for him. So now you've got Theo Mag with four fouls. You've got Luke Wessel with four fouls. Aiden Pratt with four fouls. And Colin White making a pair of free throws. 20 in the game for him. And as we know, this could very well go to overtime. That could be a big factor. 53-51. Uh -huh. Titans go back zone, leaving Mag in the game. They do. They go back zone. And one zone possession in this half. They gave up a three ball to Nate Phillips. They've only played, this is their second possession of the night, but uh, we'll see how long Van Wert waits. 
Coach, La Coach Laudick has four timeouts left, and he's going to take one right here. That will be their second timeout with exactly a minute to go in the basketball game, and they trail by a point, by two points, 53-51. A lot of strategy involved here does out of the Landorf go man, because Van Wert's doing zone stuff right now at timeout. Or, you know, what do you do with that action? Um, and for Van Wert, when do, you, when do you shoot? You have to have yeah. time in case you miss. And because we're up in the rafters and our scoreboards are blocked, do they have five or 16 fouls, Van Wert, Mark? I think they've got seven now. I think there's 10 on the Cougars and seven on OG. Okay. Yeah. So, so they're, they're in the one on one now, the, the rest of the way, too. So. Uh, just a lot of strategy here. We'll see what uh, OG comes out defensively, what kind of wrinkle Van will run offensively well, here. Do you stay zone, or is, you know, they call a timeout to talk about attacking that, or to go back man to man, and they are going to do to they show went, man to man. They went back to man to man because yeah. that's what Van Wert uh, worked on, and, and they're spreading it. Van Wert's going to spread them, and we're going to let Pratt go one on one here. Pratt and Colin White, Carson Smith, Luke Wessel. Got the floor spread. Nobody in the post right now. Aiden Pratt. Phillips working, working. Spins in the lane, has to kick it back out to Smith. Working on Mag. Half a minute to go. I think Van Wert's gonna call another timeout here. Pratt, nice ball fake, goes to the rim and will draw a foul. Or better yet, get the ball to Pratt and let him yeah, go. Yeah, how about that? His change of speed has been really good tonight to, to get to the foul line and get to the basket. Colin White picked up his third foul. And there's the contact right there. We thank Metzger Financial Services for sponsoring our instant replay this evening. Ultimate Outdoor has sponsored our scoreboard, and it now shows Aiden Pratt with 28 points, looking at 29 to tie it. OG's got a pair of timeouts left if Coach McLaughlin chooses to use them or does he choose to play? And he missed it. One point lead. Cougars gonna have to foul soon. And there it is right there. Carson Smith picks up foul four. And, and that's when you look at the free throw shooting and they has been pretty good tonight, but they're overall for the season, it's, it's, it's hurt them a little bit. They've had a lot of close games and um, it, it sometimes comes down to free throw shooting, yeah. little things like that. and It is a double bonus situation for Hunter Steckshoulder. He has made one free throw tonight in one attempt. He's an 83% shooter on the season. And that's why, point eight for him. And there's all kinds of scenarios, Mark, on make and miss here. A make is, do you foul under 10, up three? Uh, all kind of strategy here. Both teams have lots of timeouts left, so. We'll see how it plays out the last 17.1. Scholey again. That one goes off the back of the rim. Cougars with a chance to tie or win it. And timeout. 11.3 to go. Van Wert trails by, by two points. And Coach Laudick has taken timeout number three for him. Well, now what are you going to do if you, oh, gee, you know, you showed zone, you played man. Uh, what, you know, what, what do they do? And, of course, you know, then what does Coach Laudick do? How is he going to attack it? it this is a, it's a really great situation to be in, isn't it? It's a chess match. And, and it's almost like for Van Wert now, the change in defense that, that Otto Glendover has done, you have, almost have to have two plays. Yeah. One zone, one man. Or when you have a good good man play, it works against either zone Just or man, run that. Let and, it roll. Most likely it's going to be for Pratt, and what could happen is, you know, there's all that theory to play for the winner or the tie at home. But I think they weren't need something going to the basket, and they haven't shot up really well from three tonight. They've hit a couple in the fourth quarter, but uh, it's going to be a lot of different things going to happen. There's a lot of time left. Um, well, what, whatever does happen, we will have our Stolly Hustle Award winner and our post-game interview when this one comes to an end. So stay with us, 11.3 to go. Carson Smith will do the inbounding. It's man to man, he's got Mag in front of him. And this be an OG timeout, will it be? I think Coach McLaughlin just took that timeout so he can set things up defensively. 
they saw the out of bounds play, and they, the, this out of bounds play, there's about four options off of a mark, and it's just which one do you guess? There's a three option, there's a slip option, there's a post up option. There's all kinds of different things with that. Are you out of town or can't get WSN? WSN is now streaming 24 7 on Roku and Apple TV. Download our Roku channel and Apple TV app to subscribe. $100 allows you to watch anywhere in the world. Use an app.wsn.tv to sign up. Well, should we mention that uh, OG still has a timeout left and Van Wert has two? Yeah, yep. And I wouldn't be surprised if, if Van Wert doesn't get their initial look that they want, they may call another one here. We'll see what happens. Well, they certainly would like to get something going to the goal because they'd like to shoot free throws, if nothing else. And Let's, let's see what happens coming out. They're going to change who inbounds the basketball. Nate Phillips will be the trigger person now. And they change their play to Pratt's down low now. Pratt's got Erford guarding him. Here's Gunter. They're, they're There's looking Pratt for Pratt inside. Against Erford. Pratt goes up and it rolls in for him. Three seconds to go. Timeout OG. 30 points for Aiden Pratt. And points 29 and 30 have put us on the precipice of overtime. 2.9 to go, and Tyson McLaughlin takes his final timeout. And, and no disrespect to anybody in the WBL, but you look at from Defiance, uh, Shaw and Zachridge, and from St. Mary's Parks, uh, and then you then go down to these White and, and uh, Pratt. That's five really good players. There's a lot more, but yeah. Uh, it's hard to argue with any one of those on any given night. Tonight, Pratt's been the best player on the floor. He has played extremely well tonight. He's got 21 in the second half. And those two right there put us at tied at 54. And this is where a lot of strategy comes to. I, I would expect most likely that when OG comes out and lines up, Van Wert will draw it up and call a timeout and talk about again how we're going to defend this. So, you look on the, on the bench right now, I'm sure that you're going to see a, uh, one of the coaches, either Coach Lodick, you can see it right now with the clipboard. He's drawing it up, and their staff is together, and they're going to call a timeout. Well, they've got White all the way on the uh, baseline, opposite, 94 feet away, and here's that timeout. And sometimes if you're Coach McLaughlin, you just tell your guys to go out there and stand someplace where you're not really supposed to stand, and, and then you can call, you can we'll draw something we really want to do after they call a timeout. Yeah, what, what a great chess match that we've seen here. And it's really good for viewers and fans to know there's a lot more that goes into it yeah. than, than just playing. And, and it, there's preparation all week and it, it, tons of practice well, time. And it's been, you know, this second half is what we really expected the whole game to be like, Mark. Uh, and in theory, there's still a Van Wert timeout left so they could call yet another one if they come out and see another set or a different type of set from Coach McLaughlin that uh, he was just about to run a moment ago. It'll be interesting. A lot of times it, it, you'll see, you know, after a make, you can run the baseline and, and, and you can try to pick up a cheap foul yeah. by bringing something. And the rule should be for every program is as soon as the guy out of bounds runs, you run backwards. And that eliminates the charge uh, on a screen coming there. And, and there's yeah. all kind of actions because a lot of times with these plays, you throw out a bounce first and do a back screen and a slip. It's going to probably be a half quarter um, shot, but if you look right now, it's set up to be home run. You got, you got your two big guys down low, and I expect Mag to go set a screen for White right here. There's Erford to inbound. White's at midcourt, and the ball's tipped. White's going to get a three that will be short. 32 minutes wasn't enough to settle this Western Buckeye League Conference matchup, and we will go to overtime. You're watching high school basketball on WOSN. We're back at Van Wert. We're headed overtime. Our scoreboard is sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor, Ohio's distributor of Structure Pergola X. Ultimate Outdoor, a division of Alts and Seamless. Bouting, and we're looking at our scoreboard tied at 54. 13 points in the fourth quarter for OG, 14 for Van Wert, and we're headed to the next four minutes of basketball. And this is the third time, Mark, since 19 or since 2017, this game's gone overtime at Van Wert, and so 
Uh, we, we've talked about that in pregame. There's been a lot of close games here, and here we go. And we kind of predict the game would be around 60, and it, uh, they yep. get to that 60 tomorrow. Well, tonight. remember, we got lots of guys with foul trouble. Pratt's got four. Wessel's got four. Smith has, has four. Mag has four. Erford and White, Colin White, have three apiece. And the tip will go to Van Wert. So foul trouble could well play into this next four minutes. Yeah, both teams in the bonus. Van Wert's in, in the single bonus, and, and OG's the double bonus right now. That'll be interesting to see if, if OG will pressure it all. Well, each team also picks up an extra timeout in overtime. So OG has one. Van Wert has two. OG has committed 18 fouls, so the next foul could be a one and one. However, Van Wert has committed 10 plus, so it's a double bonus situation if you are a, a Titan can get to the foul line. And they're pretty patient on this possession. And Van Wert spreading out OG and waiting for Pratt to get the ball at some point up top is my guess. They're content to, to milk this clock. This is Mag guarding Carson Smith. Here comes Pratt to the top of the circle and comes out to get the basketball matched up with Colin White. He's going to give it back up again. And I don't think Van Wert will attack unless Pratt's in the middle of the floor. I think they're content and maybe try to foul out Mag here. You can see they've overloaded the left side of the floor. There's a five count just started, then they have to back it off again. Gives it up to Phillips this time. Phillips guarded by Schrader. Each team has their starting lineup on the floor right now. Are they going to be willing to run it all the way down? Is that, I mean, they're halfway through the overtime. We're approaching two minutes yeah. right now, and, it, and there isn't much sign of attack unless, again, it's Pratt. And him and White are going at it right now. This is Pratt, Colin White guarding him, but backed off some. Now up to get to five count. Pratt thought about going baseline and decided not to. Lots of contact there, yeah. no call, and, and we're, we're down to about approaching a minute and a half here. And OG's pressure has increased a little bit, but not enough for a count up top. The rest of the spots they have. There's Phillips. Gives it up in the corner to Wessel. Wessel heads inside. Smith decides to back it back out as he had Mag on him. Yeah, he peeked and saw Mag yeah. right there. And he lost the basketball, and we're going to get a held ball, which will go to Ottawa Glandorf. They ran all but 70 seconds off the clock, and OG will get the basketball. He got just a little loose of the ball there and didn't put it on his hip and just kind of fumbled it. And Here comes a defensive substitution. He'll bring Caden Schaefer in, and Luke Wessel will sit down. There's the play right there. Um, Metzger Financial Services instant replay this evening. And he fouls a double bonus. And now we'll see if OG yeah. plays for the last shot. I, I would not be surprised the way this overtime has gone. Phillips has White. There's Erford. a handoff. White backing inside and goes up and scores. Colin White with 22 in the game and a foul. There's been a couple individual plays that have worked for them. That's one of them. And with that handoff, that's so hard to guard. You see who they gave the foul to? I cannot read the scoreboard from here. Well, either way, Colin White with a chance to make it a three-point lead with 53 seconds to go in overtime. Yeah. Does so. And that was a big-time move there and finish. Uh, 23 for him in the game. And now Van Wert's got an attack here. Ottawa Glendale yeah. stays in man-to-man. In -man. They don't need a three, but they do need a score. It's going to be a duck-in for Pratt. Carson Smith back on top. Wessel. Wessel works the lane. Phillips. Now they got it to Pratt. And now back to Phillips. Carson Smith. 
They're gonna have to get something up soon. Here's Phillips to the lane. Wessel, kick out. Wessel for three to tie it. Yeah, and he rattled it in. OG with one more shot opportunity. Here's White, no timeout. Mag inside. Shot goes up, and we'll go to double overtime. Luke Wessels points eight, nine, and 10. We'll send it to a second overtime. We're tied at 57. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSM. Well, 36 minutes wasn't enough. We're gonna play four minutes more. Our free throw sponsor tonight has been Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. A traditional three-point play, Colin White. A three-point field goal, Nate Phillips. We're tied at 57. And Mark, that, that was really impressive by Aiden Pratt there. He didn't force anything. He had a couple opportunities. He made the right play and a big shot by Wessel. And then Otto Glinder kind of lost track of time there at the end and, and didn't get a shot off. And well, I guess we're going to play four more. I guess we are. And once again, the tip goes to the Cougars. Let's see if they choose to play this the same way they played the first overtime. Steck Schulte has Garrett Gunter out front. There's the five second count has started and quickly pulled off. It's definitely been a cat and mouse game here in the last four minutes of the game and both overtimes. No one's blinked yet, Mark. <laughs> they had it for almost three minutes in the first overtime. Here's a move to the goal and a basket will go for Garrett Gunter. Big hoop by Garrett there and, and finished that time. He's got just four points in the game, but those two were huge. Here's Colin White with a great move and goes right to the rim, and he finishes. And that was Erford there on the that Erford? Yeah, the yeah. fake handoff. I gotta start looking at numbers instead of blonde hair. And really good execution. He's uh, got 17, did not score in the fourth quarter. But he's got 17 now, we're tied at 59. And Phillips goes to the rim and he will draw a foul. And the foul went to whom? Looks like it went to Grant Schrader, who is not in any foul trouble. It's just his first. Here's the foul right there. And it will be a one and one This will be the last one and one of the game for Nate Phillips. And this is the point in the game where you see where, you know, free throw shooting, uh, you know, we'll see what happens to finish the game. That, that's going to be a factor for both teams down the stretch. A little hard. They must have called down the shot, Mark, so it was a two-shot foul. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Well, either way, we're not going to shoot any one-on-ones the rest of the evening. And Phillips splits them. He's got 10 in the game now, 11 in the game now. I think I got my scorebook all messed up, don't I? Got a little excitable here today, Mr. Yeah. Bagley. It's, it's 60 points. I said 60, 60 win it. No. It's 60-59. Yes. That we do know. Theo Mag looks inside to White. Now they got him down in the low box. Tripled Doubled up. Triple team there. Yeah. He's working on Phillips down low. And a three-inch height advantage there. And a bigger body as well. There's Steck Schulte going inside. And he has to throw it way back out on top to Erford. Now's Colin White. Looks like a high ball screen here. Picked up by Carson Smith and goes up and jumps over everybody. And the rebound comes to Pratt. His team is down a point. And his coach takes a timeout. We're going to take a break also. You're watching High School Basketball on WOSN.
We're back at Van Wert, where tonight our timeouts are sponsored by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Van Wert trailing by a point. And they will have the basketball out of bounds on the sideline, just under two minutes to go in this Western Buckeye League matchup. There's Wessel working on Erford. And now he gets doubled up. And Van Wert's got to attack when, when Otto Glendorf doubles. They can't hold it the whole time it, with, with, with Ottawa's pressure. Caden okay, Smith looking. Erford has Pratt. Here's Pratt into the corner to Wessel. The possession arrow favors Ottawa Glandorf if that becomes a situation. Pratt working inside, hands off, and Wessel finishes. <laughs> so it's 62-59 now. <laughs> Got my scoreboard straight finally. OG up is trailing by three with the basketball. Here's Erford for three. White score, soars in to get the rebound. He will draw a foul. That was an incredible effort yeah. by White to get to the glass and got it up. And it wouldn't matter either way, but he, he had a chance for an and one there. And that becomes the fifth foul on Carson Smith. So he becomes the first player to foul out today and will finish with 10. Colin White to the free throw line. He's got 23 tonight and rattles that one in for point 24. There aren't too many kind uh, rolls on these rims, <laughs> but he got one there. And that one as well, 25 for him. Both teams have two timeouts. Lots of things are gonna happen here in the last minute. Looking, looking, ball goes in bounds. Here's Pratt, it's three on two if they choose to take it. And they bring it back out. There's a foul that will go against Colin White. Colin White now has four fouls, and Aiden Pratt will head to the free throw line. He will be in a double bonus now. We've talked about free throws, and, and that's going to win or lose, you know, the game for either team, most likely as we finish down this stretch, the last 51.3. So Aiden Pratt will shoot this pair. And that one is not a kind roll off the home rim. Very similar look, and it just was yeah. a little bit strong. And Bag back in the game, Theo. Aiden Pratt. And that one also spins out. So OG trails by a point with the basketball. And there's going to be a set here for White. This is him with the basketball now. Steck Schulte. Timeouts if they need him for OG. Mag high. There's that screen inside. They're trying to get it down inside. They're posting him up and then come off the double screen yep. curl. Pratt picks him up. Here's a kick out to Erford. White inside. Back and down Pratt, back and down Pratt, kick out. Here's a three ball, Steck shoulder, yes! And the ball is tipped out of bounds by Steck shoulder. Hunter Steck shoulder nails a three ball, his 15th of the year, and puts his team up 64-62, 12 seconds to go. Timeout, Van Wert. Here's the replay of that shot, Mark. And what a big time play there by Steck Schulte. And a great pass by White looking opposite. Wide open look and knocked it down. And he had the courage to take it. And White had the great uh, sight backside. That's where you look. And, and he saw the defense and made the unselfish play. And that's you know, comes down to another possession again. Yes, it does. Will we go to a third overtime? The ball will be in. Van Wert's hands. Check out our website, WSN.TV, for scores and standings for more 
sports and teams than anyone in the state. Check out our broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts, and more at WOSN.TV. Well, just a thought. Titans going to play zone or man-to-man? I think they'll play man-to-man, and, and you're going to see a wrinkle of that play they've run before. And, it, and Pratt's in the same position. He's on that block, and, and look for a slip and a curl for Pratt. Caden Schaefer will inbounds against Theo Mag, although Mag now backs off of him. Garrett Gunter. There's Pratt on the curl There's you talked curl. about. Yep, looking for him, looking for him. And can't get inside Stecksholdy with a steal. And Wessel tries to track him down. There's a foul by Caden Smith. And the game is over. And Ottawa Glandorf with a huge three-point field goal by Hunter Stecksholdy. And then a steal on the attempted last play for the Van Wert Cougars. And Ottawa Glandorf will come out of the Cougar Gymnasium with a 64-62 double overtime win. Post game show coming up after this. You're watching high school basketball at WOSA. We're back in Van Wert at the Cougar Den where the Ottawa Glendorf Titans have taken a double overtime victory. And coach, we just said it, ho-hum, another night in the Western Buckeye League. You know, it, it's a grind every single night. And every time, you know, OG and Van Wert get together, it's going to be a battle. It's always really physical. And, uh, you know, I, I'm just very proud of our guys for being resilient. Probably not our best performance, but a lot of that had to do with the way Van Wert came out and played. They played extremely well. They battled, They, you know, they really took it to us. You know, in all honesty, we didn't deserve to win that game. But uh, we've had a couple games where I thought in the fourth quarter, late in games, that we've kind of let slip away. And I'm just proud of our guys that, you know, to stick in there and uh, make some plays and get out of here with the win. Tyson, you were down 30-23 in the third quarter. You called timeout. What, what was the message then? What, ha what happened after that? Uh, we talk all the time about being tough and being physical, and, and they just totally manhandled us. And, you know, it, it's one of those things that mistakes are going to happen, but they went right at us. And, uh, you know, we, we talk about a boxing match, you know, taking some shots. We took some. And I think that the little thing we talked about in our locker room, you know, Theo got in foul trouble, really changed what we tried to do. But Brad Mag came in there and gave us a lot of minutes. And that's a credit to Brad. I just told the guys in the locker room, we got a bunch of guys in there that want to play and are waiting for their opportunity. Brad doesn't get a ton of opportunities, but tonight he made the most of it, and he really changed the game for us. Tyson, uh, Colin White did not shoot the ball well tonight, but he was able to get himself repeatedly to the free throw line. It's a sign of a good player to be able to score in those type situations. Yeah, he's got to find different ways to score, and, you know, I think that his versatility shows. You know, he kind of got out of, got out of rhythm there, and, you know, he shoots really well from the free throw line. It was just one of those nights, and, uh, you know, for, for whatever reason. But, uh, you know, we found a way late in the game. We still went to him. We're going to continue to go with him, and, uh, you know, I'm glad they got number 22 on our team. Well, well Coach, you, you talk about trust in your team. He trusted Hunter Stecksholder. He had the ball in the low post. He kicked it opposite, and he trusted Hunter for a big shot. We tell all the time, you know, we don't want good shots. We want great shots. And uh, Hunter's had some opportunities late in games. He's had two of them, you know, about that same exact spot. So for Hunter to hit that as a senior, as our point guard, you know, uh, beyond proud of the young man. And you're 5-0 and moving on to Western Buckeye League. Survive in advance, I guess. Good. Thank you very much, Coach McLaughlin, for being with us this evening. Bring in Mark Bagley in our first order of business, Mark. We have to come up with a uh, Stolly Hustle Award winner. Remember, you can always check out our, the highlights of our Stolly Hustle Award winners on our YouTube page. And, well, a lot of guys we could have given to. A lot of guys played really hard this evening on both teams. But Hunter Stecks only made two big plays late in the game. We're going to give it to him. He had a big-time three on a great pass from Colin White. And then the steal at the end of the game and the clock ran out. And, just made two gutsy plays to help his team win tonight. And, and we can't, it would be remiss without saying how well Van Wert played tonight, and especially Aiden Pratt. They did, and, and Coach McLaughlin said it. They may not have played their best game, but a lot of that had to do with Van Wert, and, and Pratt was outstanding tonight. And Van Wert played very gritty and tough and just didn't make the play, a couple plays at the end, and it came down to every little ma play matters. Ottawa right, Glendale is going to escape this evening with a double overtime victory. We want to thank our sponsors this evening. Ultimate Outdoor Ohio, Mesker Financial Services, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, and of course, Stolly Insurance for their providing us with the Hustle Award winner tonight. Well, thank the athletic director here at Van Word as well. That would be Trent Temple and our crew tonight in the truck, Wayne Getz and Derek Henry, and our camera people tonight, Jacob O'Neill, Seth Hagemeyer, and Marshall Jordan. 
Ottawa Glendorf escapes. Double overtime victory, 64-62. You're watching high school basketball on WSN.